Hey everyone, you're here sewing with Cody and Pete. And today's video, we're on the Bernina 570 Quilters Edition. And we're playing with the Bernina Stitch Regulator, the BSR. So I get many, many, many questions about the Bernina Stitch Regulator, um, mainly because Bernina is the only one with a stitch regulator foot. This is definitely one of my most favorite feet because I do a lot of quilting. So for instance, this little wall hanging, this entire thing was done on a Bernina. This was done on a Bernina 770 and all of that is free motion quilted using the stitch regulator. I'm using a very thin thread, but all the stitches and everything was done with a stitch regulator, which is the same stitch regulator we have here on the Bernina 570. So currently I've been working on the Bernina 570, making different videos and doing different things. And I get a lot of questions, like I said, with the Bernina Stitch Regulator. They want to know how it works, what needles they should be using, what stitch blade, what stitch, whatever. Because um, there's so many different things that you can really work and do with the Bernina Stitch Regulator. And different things you want to set your machine up to optimize the use of the Bernina Stitch Regulator. And make sure you're regulating your stitches to the best of the machine's ability. So many questions I get is what needle? So whenever I'm quilting on basically like your regular quilt, so you've got quilters grade, quilting grade cotton, um, an array of different battings, and what needle to use? So I usually always use a 9014 top stitch needle. I use a size 9014 because you're really forcing the fabric underneath the machine. Um, since the machine isn't feeding the fabric through uh, with its feed dogs, you're in full control. I want to make sure I'm using a needle that's not going to bend at the slightest movement. If the needle happens to be down in the fabric while I'm forcing that fabric through, I don't want something really weak and really loose. Um, so that's why I go with the 9014. And the purpose of the top stitch needle, um, when you're looking at your needles and everything, you'll notice the top stitch has a eye, basically the eyelid of the needle where that thread goes through is exceptionally long. And that's because it's designed to give you a beautiful top stitching. And quilting is essentially a top stitch. So you want to make sure you can optimize your um, stitches to make them make sure they look the best that they can look. And also if you're because you're going at higher speeds typically and at a constant rate, uh, that larger eye really puts less strain on the thread, so you're less likely to have thread breakage or thread fraying. Um, and also, if you're ever working with a problematic thread, a top stitch needle, because that larger eye, really helps uh, reduce some of the stress on the thread, and it usually gives you less issues. Um, also, when we work with the Bernina Stitch Regulator, you want to make sure you're using your straight stitch plate. So I like for the Brina seven the 570, I took off the 9mm and I put on the 0mm stitch plate, which is what we have on the machine now. That really helps uh, give you a prettier stitch. And the same thing when you're just regular straight stitching in the center needle position. Um, something else, you want to make sure you've got either your slide on table or when you're just practicing fabric, or if you have your koala or a horn where your cat your machine can sit flush in the cabin and give you a bigger workspace, or a larger so steady table um, is really nice. It gives you more workspace, so it's less drag, so you don't have the quilt hanging down uh, from your table, which can make it more difficult to move to different parts of the quilt. One of the most important things is some type of quilting glove, something with a grip. These are uh, machiners, but there are many different brands out there, but that is one of the most important things. And a lot of customers, they come in the shop and they've either never sewn on a Bernina or they've never even used, they've never used the stitch regulator because their machine didn't come with it, it doesn't have it, or they saw it in the show, they saw it in the magazine, and they want to see how it works. So when I sit down and do it, everything looks beautiful, everything looks, everything looks great, but when they sit down at it, the, they're sitting down, they, they don't have any quilting gloves, they've never used a stitch regulator before, and they sit down and it's very jerky. And that's because, one, because you're not, there's no gloves, so there's no friction, especially in the winter time where, where our hands are all dry and when we move the quilt, our hands move, but the quilt always doesn't go with the same movement. So when they're stitching, their quilting is very jerky. So basically, the way the stitch regulator works, if you haven't seen it or are not quite sure exactly what uh, what it does is so when we move our fabric 
the machine stitches at the set stitch length that we have set. Um, so if you're moving it and it, the fabric isn't moving with your hands as it should, and it's moving kind of jerky, you can get jerkier stitches and they're just not that pretty. Um, unlike not using a stitch regulator where the machine is just stitching at the speed that you're telling it with your, the, the amount of pressure you're applying to your foot, um, you're not going to really get that jerkiness. You're just going to get really tight or really loose open stitches. But with the stitch, reg be with the stitch regulator, you're moving it jerky so the machine's slowing and speeding up to try and keep that stitch length. But if it's moving to the left or to the right a little bit, it's, you're going to see that drastic uh, change. Um, because the faster we move our fabric, the faster the machine stitches with the stitch regulator to keep the set stitch length, it can look a little different. It may not be perfect the very first time by any means. Using a stitch regulator still requires practice, but basically what you have to practice with when using a stitch regulator is your movement. So you have to get in sync with how the stitch regulator works. Um, it doesn't take nearly as much time as trying to regulate your speed and everything, um, but just getting a feel for it. But the machiner gloves, or basically any type of quilting gloves, without promoting any particular one. This is some machine is what we carry in the shop and what we use and they're nice because they've got grips just on all the fingers and they, they allow for it to breathe and they stretch really well. But it really allows you to grip the fabric so you're not sliding along. And you don't have to really have it on both hands. Just definitely have it on your more dominant hand. Um, so that leaves your other hand free to do what you want to do. Um, but definitely gives you a smoother stitching. Something else that's important. So with the Brunian Stitch Regulator, uh, when you first plug it in, it goes to the straight stitch, MBSR mode one, but what it does is it defaults to a stitch length of 2.0. Uh, if you're using a thinner thread, like I did on the Hummingbird Paper Piece project over here, um, a thinner thread, you can leave it at that two millimeters because one, I'm using a thinner thread and my stitching is really, really, really tight. Um, so my patterns are really tight. So that shorter stitch length works out perfect. But like the sample I have here that I've just been working on is it's a more open. So that two millimeter stitch length is too tight. And I'm using a 50 weight just cotton thread just to really emphasize something a little bit thicker to really see on the black, to really see the stitches. Um, so I always like to increase my stitch length anywhere between like a 2.5 to 2.75 up to a 3 depending on how big my design is because the machines most of them can only stitch at 100 stitches per minute so if you leave the stitch length at that 2 millimeters the machine's going to reach its maximum uh, stitching the stitch speed relatively quickly so if you're moving it at a medium pace you may be maxing out the speed of the machine already so by increasing the stitch length, it allows you to move the fabric more quickly. I'm not talking about super fast, but just more quickly. For most of us, more of a, a more natural speed um, because it doesn't have to stitch as many stitches per inch. So it allows it to move quicker. So that's why it's recommended to increase your uh, stitch length, using your stitch length knob. Something else you can also do is you can also change your pressure for pressure. Um, so right now, I'm just working with, I think it's just like 100% cotton batting and it's two layers of black fabric. Um, and the, the uh, foot of the machine, the foot, <laughs> the sole of the BSR is resting right along the fabric. So if you were working with um, a quilt that had bulkier seams or a quilt that had thicker batting, so we always come to our pressure for pressure here. And we can come here, we can reduce this. Right now it's at 70. So we can drop that down quite a bit. And what that's going to do, it's going to alleviate some of the pressure on our foot. And if you really drop it, you'll actually see that foot hover up a little bit. Um, so like when we go close to zero, and especially the negative, it'll pop up. Now you do have to be careful that you don't have it pop up too much. Because what that's going to cause, is going to cause flagging of your fabric and your stitches are really going to start messing up. And that's not something you want. But sometimes 
uh, especially if you go to a demo working with the stitch regulator and the it wasn't set up initially for, to use a stitch regulator, the foot could be too low, not using gloves, not the right knee. All these little variables can play a role in your stitches. Because also, if the batting that's being used is thicker than normal and those seams and your foot's too, there's too much pressure or it's dragging along the fabric, it can make it more difficult to move your quilt. So reducing that pressure for pressure can help reduce some of the drag because in the Bernina Stitch Regulator 10, there are two other soles. There's an open toe, the closed toe, which is on the foot, and then this guy, the Echo Quilting one. This one's really nice. So it really hovers over the fabric nicely, and especially it will glide over those bulky seams in our actual quilt much better than some than the two metal feet do. So this is one of my this is probably my favorite sole to use with the Bernina Stitch Regulator. So let's play a little bit with the Stitch Regulator, and we'll see how it really works. So there's multiple ways to power the stitch regulator so we can use our start stop button so by pressing and hold holding this it will turn on and activate the stitch regulator the downside to that is when you're done you want to stop especially stop with the needle down we want to make we want we then have to remove a hand to then turn the stitch regulator off so personally me i like using the foot pedal I know most people prefer the button, but I like the foot pedal. So the way the foot pedal works is when I press down on the foot pedal, it turns on the stitch regulator. So whenever I get to a point that I need to pause or I need to stop, I just completely let off the foot pedal and then it turns off the BSR and drops my needle, just like you see it here. Because with the BSR, you do have two different modes. And this has always been a confusing part to many, many customers. Um, is what are the two different modes and when should I use them? So many customers, they find a mode they're comfortable with and that's what they stick with. And that's me. So BSR mode one is my personal preferred method or mode. So BSR mode one, when you turn on and activate that BSR, it starts to slowly stitch, even when you're not moving your quilt. But when you start moving your quilt, it starts to regulate and stitch. And stitch. Um, but when you come to a pause, if you need to stop and come to a pause and you stop moving your quilt, that machine, that needle is still going up and down very slowly. The benefit, there's many, many benefits with this. The benefits of using BSR mode one, when you come to a pause, if it's just a fraction of a second, it can give you an extra stitch in a corner, for, for, for instance. And then once you start moving again, you have that nice, crisp, locked in corner because sometimes when you make a 90 degree turn and you just stitch and then start moving again that corner may not be nice and crisp because it's just one stitch in there but having the BSR mode one if we pause at some of these points it'll give you one extra stitch before you start moving again and give you a beautiful corner basically the other benefit of BSR mode one is when we pause because it continues to stitch very slowly when we start moving the fabric again the machine's already stitching the machine's already going it doesn't skip a beat now this is where it differs from bsr mode 2. bsr mode 2 it's the complete opposite when you pause for moving the fabric the bsr pauses as well the downside to this in my opinion is so one is top it pauses with the needle up which makes perfect sense because you don't want to start moving your quilt with the needle down and the machine's not ready so it pauses with the needle up and then when you start moving your fabric again it has to recognize that you're moving your fabric again so that very first stitch after a pause is almost always a little bit longer because you have to realize the needle's up and the BSR is still on. So when you start moving that fabric, the BSR has to recognize, okay, the fabric's being moved. I need to start stitching. It does it very quickly, but unless you're barely moving the fabric, that first stitch, by the time that needle comes down, your fabric could be no telling where. Um, so the stitch length could be twice as long, it could be three times as long as the set stitch length. So if you're just doing an all over, just kind of circle movement, no points, no nothing, BSR mode 2 is a nice little training wheels, as I like to refer to it as, because when you, when you stop moving the fabric to think, especially when you're using the start-stop button, 
it will pause for you and then you can kind of start moving the fabric in and it starts to stitch but I find if I'm doing something where I really want to see pretty stitches I'm going to see my quilting I'm using BSR mode one um, because I can still stop the machine when I need to pause by just laying off my foot pedal and whenever I apply pressure any amount of pressure to the foot pedal again and hold that pressure well just basically press down the foot pedal and just continue to press down on it my BSR is on but as soon as I completely let off it turns it off so let's give it a look so I'll press down on the stitch regulate on the foot pedal and you'll see underneath the stitch regulator a red light will come on so I'll press down the stitch regulate and you'll see it's already starting to stitch and the red lights on so you don't want to stay in one spot too long because it will um, break the thread but so I find just nice movements you can speed up of course and slow down but just soft movements and of course depending on what table you're sewing on will also depend on how smooth the machine will be because it may bounce around a little bit like the table I'm working here with in the studio is not the best table this is not my sewing table so it does want to bounce around So I know a lot of customers will come in and they expect to sit down at the machine with the BSR and their quilting looks perfect. That's what they come in expecting. And that's just not the case. Nothing is perfect. But it definitely helps with your stitch length and creating much prettier designs. But so if I want to stop, I stop off my foot pedal. The BSR turns off because we see the red light turn off and the needle drops down. And then when I want to start back up again, I just press down the foot pedal and I start moving. So I like to press all the way down the foot pedal because depending on the position that I'm sitting, I may get a little relaxed and I may slowly let off the foot pedal. So if I'm pushing all the way down on the foot pedal, I'm less likely to accidentally let off completely and stop stitching. But let's take a closer look at the stitches. So here we can see the stitches are very consistent. You'll definitely better find some that are a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, but it's they're fewer and far between opposed to doing it without a stitch regulator and it's just fun to play and practice the best advice I can give to anybody when working with a stitch regulator or working with any free motion is practice 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 because sitting down at it at first just like anything it's not going to be perfect um, everything takes practice um, I've got hundreds of sandwiches that are this size that I've done over the years just playing with different designs just playing with new designs and sometimes you can really just just have fun with it and just play um, some of them I really like and I'll go and like surge the edges and keep it as a sample if I ever want to use in use that design in a quilt it's a good way to get a scale of different things and just different patterns kind of like have your own little sketchbook but it's a little you know BSR quilting sampler um, something you can pull different ideas from and different things to play with but the stitch regulator is a wonderful tool it's very easy to learn working with free motion and it gives you some versatility because you can use a straight stitch or a zigzag but remember if you are using a straight stitch plate which is what's usually recommended you can only do that straight stitch and if you're stitching too fast for the machine depending on your machine the green light will turn red the screen may blink red and it will beep at you you can always turn that beep off um, but though it will give the machine will give you some indicators if you are exceeding the speed of what the machine is capable of it and remember it doesn't matter where your speed slider is because when you connect the BSR the screen completely changes 
and um, it bypasses whatever speed regulation you have set on. And the BSR just attaches like any other Bernina foot and depending on your machine like on the Bernina 570 there's a little plug right behind um, basically right underneath where the dual feed is. You'll see it. There's a little picture of it on the back of the machine. It just plugs right in. If your feed dogs are up it'll prompt you to lower your feed dogs and that's pretty much it. It's a very easy to set up. Um, I have an older video working with the Bernina Stitch Regulator, but I just wanted to have a more updated video because I do get a lot more, a lot of questions when working with free motion and working with the BSR and why their stitches just aren't perfect. It just takes time, um, a lot less time than trying to work without it. But just getting a feel of the Stitch Regulator, I've people in the class and like it just t takes 10 minutes or so and they've started in this area and it's a little jerky but once they've got over here and they've got a better feel with it especially working with the gloves working with something to help grip the fabric that's the biggest challenge that I see because typically when we sit down for a demo they're not using gloves they're just they just have their hand and this one hands and they just want to play with it and it's not what they expected because they're, they're not playing with they're not working with all the right tools at the same time when working with the stitch regular and any type of free motion quilting. A lot of will say, oh yeah, I use the gloves at home and this and that. Uh, and you do the same thing when you have your BSR at home. But yes, just practice and have fun and play with it. Because like the, the Bernina 570 and many of our other Berninas come with the stitch regulator. Um, and it's a wonderful tool. I can't tell you how many things I've quilted with it um, on various different machines. So go play with your BSR, have some fun, practice, um, and as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, it helps other people see the different videos, it helps out the channel, and as always, happy quilting!